Okay, you're right. So today is the assessment task, and I'm probably going to give you two lessons to get through this. You might not need two lessons, but uh, I'll give you something else for the next lesson if you do finish it. Um, but if you don't finish it today, don't worry, you can carry it on uh, tomorrow as well. We have been looking at comparing poetry for the last couple of lessons, and before we actually go into the assessment today, I want to just bring your, your attention towards the mark scheme. So you know exactly what it is that I'm looking for and how you're going to get some marks, and then you're going to actually go into the assessment. So the mark scheme has got four key areas. Um, the first thing really to notice is, is that you need to have a clear set of comparisons featuring similarities and or differences uh, between poems. So that's a clear set of comparisons. That's more than one, more than two. A, a combination of three or four comparisons will be absolutely fine. You need to make sure that those uh, comparisons that you are spotting similarities. Now, there might be similarities, there might not be. That's why it says and or differences. So you don't have to try and find similarities. You don't have to try and find differences. You can just do one or the other or a bit of both. Okay. There is a focus on the form and structure. It's really important that you are writing about the way the poet has used the particular form of poetry. The, the, the type of poem that, that, that we're looking at and how you also need to write about the structure, so how it begins, how it ends, the use of rhyme, the use of meter, things like that. Then, for number three, you need to also make sure you focus on poet's language. So the words that they've chosen, the metaphors, the similes, uh, any kind of sonification, things like that, those language techniques uh, that the poet may or may not have used. And like it says there in both two and three, the effect that those things have on the reader. So not just spotting the feature, uh, but saying what the effect of it is. You also need to include relevant terminology um, because uh, that just shows your understanding of the kind of the key English uh, literature terminology and words and, and kind of it helps really raise the quality of your answer. Um, obviously use it accurately so it supports the examples from the poem. So there's no point talking about rhyme and using the word rhyme if you're actually looking at uh, the use of commas. Okay, <laughs> so make sure you use the right terminology for the right quotes. Here is a list of terminology. Now, these, these are the ones that we've been looking at over the course of the last couple of lessons. You've also got to think about, you've got punctuation as well. That could be a feature that you want to draw on. Um, you could also, obviously, the basics of noun, verb, adjectives, adverbs, um, and kind of parts of speech like that. So the yes, this listed on the screen now is very, very useful, uh, but don't forget the basics. You can talk about punctuation, you can talk about nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, etc. as well. So here is the question. Compare how Rupert Brooke and Wilfred Owen use poetry to show their feelings about war. In your answer, you should write in paragraphs that compare the poems. Focus on the feelings that the poets have about war. Use terminology whenever possible. Write about the use of language. Write about the use of structure and form. So that is your personal checklist. There's the question again. Now, these are the things that you might want to include in your answer. These are exactly the same things that are on that comparison grid we looked at in a previous lesson. What is the main idea in the poem? What attitudes do the poets have towards war? The relationship between the title and the poem? The first line or opening effect? The last line and the ending effect? Use of rhyme and its effect? Use of form, structure and its effect? Here is a kind of structure of how your answer or one of your paragraphs could be written. I've obviously put gaps in it um, to make you uh, to, to avoid you copying it exactly, and if you do want to use it, you can then still get marked for it. So you'll notice in the yellow bits in the box here, um, both poets are strong feelings at all. My first sentence uh, sets a clear topic for the paragraph. I then talk and move on to Brook. Oh, hi, then. Oh, curse gone. I then go to Brook and talk about his side of things. So I, you know, Brook feels something about something he states in his poets poem something, this means that something and the use of some terminology makes the reader something. So there's 
you know, that's the kind of idea there. And then on the other hand, you'll notice I've got my comparison phrase there, and I move towards Owen, has very mm -mm feelings about mm. He states mm -hmm, which means mm. And this terminology makes the reader hmm. So that's how you, you can see that's how you compare. You do a little bit about one, a little bit about the other. And then you finish off with it. It's clear they both feel passionately about hmm, but in different ways. And that's the kind of the structure that you should be trying to use. Now, if you want to go in your own style, that's also fine as well. Um, so that would be an example of one. Here's another one. This is uh, for the titles. So both poets have used titles that have a relationship with the rest of the poem. So that's that one there. I'm kind of looking at that particular focus. Just one focus at a time, remember. Brooke uses something, which is something. The title suggests something. Owen uses something as a title. This title includes some terminology. This means it's clear that both poets have used titles that something, which is in the poems. So obviously, that's the kind of style to go for if you're not sure how to write your answer. If you've got your own style, go with that too. So here's the title. Compare how Rupert Brooke and... So here's a question. Compare how Rupert Brooke and Muffler don't use poetry to show their feelings about war. Now it's time to write your answer to the question. Here's the poems. There's the title. Pause the video here and uh, get cracking. Are you ready? Stop the video or press press sorry, press play on the video and I'll move on to the end. So at the end of the lesson, well at the end of your piece of writing, these are the things to check before you definitely know you've finished or not. So have you written three or more paragraphs? Have you written about both poems in every paragraph? Have you explained how the poets feel about war? Have you used terminology in your work today? Have you written about language? Have you written about structure or form? Go through your answer and just skim through and spot uh, where you've done those things. If you can write them, you can even, you can even uh, put a little mark in the margin, like the number um, which, which you've done. And then you'll be able to spot which ones you haven't done. And then you can go back and add, add a little bit extra before you turn your work into me. Okay, year eight. Good luck with that. Uh, any questions, please let me know.